Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Shelby on Roads Less Traveled and today I'm gonna to be giving you my top 10 tips on how to affordably travel as a college student. Now, if you're new here and don't know my story at all, I actually moved to China about eight months ago where I've traveled all throughout Asia and even before then I was an avid traveler. So these are just some tips that I picked up along the way on how to save money and travel at the same time. Now, while you're watching this, there might be some tips that I actually miss. So if you have any money saving tips, please comment them down in the comment section below because who wouldn't love to save money? I would, maybe somebody else would too. And if you don't have any tips, that's okay. You can comment down where was the last place that you traveled or where do you really wanna go next? Last but not least, please don't forget to check out my Instagram page where you can follow me um, around Asia because that's where I post most of my pictures. And you can also watch my travel vlogs and get a closer look on how Asia is really treating me. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So tip number one is to keep class days in mind. Now this might be easier for juniors or seniors who have already gone through most of their classes freshman and sophomore year. But I know like for me, I actually scheduled a lot of my classes at least towards like senior year. Um, on to stop on Thursdays because I wanted longer weekends so that I can travel more because I already knew that I wanted my last year to be fun filled so if you also know that you want to travel and that's something you want to do you can try to push your classes more towards freshman and sophomore year I'm not a fan of overloading yourself. I'm not telling you to do that. But if you know that this is something that you want to do, leave more days open so that you can actually travel. Okay, tip number two is to make sure that you always know what are the cheapest days to book your flight. Now, normally the cheapest days to book your flight are always midweek on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, leaving the most expensive days to book your flight are always weekends, which are Friday and Saturdays. Now, if you can, or if you do have this flexibility, try to take flights on around Tuesday. Or if you know that you have you don't have class on Monday, maybe you can take your flight back on a Monday. That'll save you extra money. What you can also do is make sure to book your flights on shoulder days. Now, shoulder periods are those periods after holidays, like after Christmas or after New Year's. Those flights tend to be the cheapest. So if you wanna book a little trip, Make sure to book after big holidays. Now, tip number three. Now, this might be my favorite tip ever. Search in private mode. Now, if you have Google Chrome, because that's what I use, always search in incognito. Because what that does is it doesn't save your um, searches in cookies. Now, if you don't know what your cookies are, it's basically that thing like, say for example, you search a shirt. Then if you exit out of that search and you go onto Facebook or whatever, you see an ad for the exact shirt that you searched. And you're like, hmm, how do they even know I searched this shirt? It's because all of your searches are saved in the cookies. If you um, search your flights in incognito mode, it won't be that way. If you search without it, um, these airline companies, they will see, hey, Shelby searching for plane rides to Paris. She keeps searching that. So they will just jack up the prices. Whereas if you search in incognito mode, that won't happen. So you'll always get the lowest price for what you're actually searching for. Big tip. Major key in the All right, tip number four, utilize your benefits. You guys are students and you get student discounts. That's a big thing. One website that you can log on to is called Student Universe. And actually, if you're not a student, you can still sign on um, up until the age of 26, I believe. I haven't personally used it, but a lot of my friends had, and I wish I had known about it back when I was in college, which wasn't that long ago. But you can log in under a .edu um, email address, and it will give you discounts on hotels, discounts on flights, and I think a lot of different things around the area that you can do. That's totally great. Another website is STA Travel, um, where you can also get a lot of student discounts. So it's just really all about doing your research and figuring out um, where you can apply your student ID card. It's not just good in school. It's actually good other places. Rule number five, there's no discount 
find one. <laughs> so there are other websites that give you discounts, not exactly a student discount, but there's websites like Groupon where you can find tons and tons and tons of things happening around the area. I like to use it all the time. I haven't used it abroad yet, but I know locally back home, I would always use it around New York, cause that's where I'm from. And then when I was in Rhode Island, I also used it to get some really cool deals. So it, it works, utilize that. Going along with that, make sure that you always do your research and look up free events. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually get more bang for your buck by doing something that is more meaningful, something that you actually really, really enjoy, and it's free. When I recently went to Seoul, South Korea, and I think it was October, I didn't do my research. I kind of just went with the flow of things, the flow of life, and I wanted to see one of the palaces, as you know, a tourist attraction. But because I was traveling on a holiday, those palaces, there was no entry, so it was all free. So I could travel into any palace over there for free. So you never know what is actually given for free during the time that you're going somewhere. So make sure you look it up and get the most bang for your buck. Or not buck because it's free, but you, you get what I mean. Rule number six, hotels actually don't need to be that expensive you can enjoy your entire trip by not traveling <laughs> and staying in a five-star hotel. Most of the places that I actually stay in are Airbnbs. I absolutely love Airbnb. And below I will put my Airbnb code so that you can get $40 off your first stay. But anyways, Airbnb is really super great, but that's not the only site you can use. Um, there are other websites out there. That's just my preference. And you can also stay in a hostel. I did something like that recently when I was in Malaysia. It wasn't exactly a hostel, but I actually stayed in a capsule hotel. Super, super, super cheap. I spent literally 13 US dollars, I think, for my entire stay for several nights. And I had my own capsule and but there was like multiple people inside. I, get, I think there was about 12 capsules in one room. But there are just different, really cool, amazing experiences like that where you can save money and do something that you would never imagine you would do in a lifetime. So save money on a hotel if you can. Slightly piggybacking off of rule number six, rule number seven is don't always eat out. I know that if you get an Airbnb, um, sometimes you can book an apartment or even if you just book a room, it may come with a kitchen. Um, so I would suggest go to your local market, wherever you are, buy some food and cook so that you can spend your money elsewhere on other activities that you really enjoy rather than spending it on expensive restaurants. Now, rule number eight seems like a simple one, but budget. Budget your life away because you <laughs> you will not imagine how much you will actually spend when you don't realize it. I had like a little thing also in Malaysia. I have a lot of recent Malaysia stories because I just went there, I think maybe two weeks ago. But in Malaysia, I actually like ran out of cash. <laughs> not that I ran out of cash, but I needed to go and take out money from my ATM. And I was like nowhere near an ATM. So I was like struggling with that a little bit and that turned into like a whole day affair of me just trying to find ATM for hours. Anyways, you can avoid all that if you just <laughs> budget. Make sure you know the exchange rates ahead of time. Make sure that you budget out um, how much money you're gonna spend on like little gifts and trinkets and souvenirs that you will buy outside and then give yourself an extra cushion so that you feel comfortable um, just in case you do spend over your limit. Another thing you have to do, compare, compare, compare. Compare your flight prices, hotel prices, anything. You can go on different websites such as Expedia. I like that as well to um, book flights. Or even there's a website called Fair Compare where they give you um, a lot of websites um, that you can compare flights and hotel prices so that you make sure that you're getting the cheapest one. Number nine, you can take day trips and you can take train trips. So sometimes, I know day trips don't really apply if you are um, going overseas, but actually um, sometimes in college, it's way more fun to take a trip 
somewhere that's kind of close by or somewhere that you wouldn't exactly imagine yourself going to. So you can take a day trip and literally go and spend all day in one location and then come straight back. And sometimes that might be the most rewarding experience for you. You can book it with a few friends and literally like ball out. It's mad cool. Um, another thing that you can do is take train trips. I know that um, once you are abroad, say for example in Europe, there's a lot of countries that are very close and you can actually take a train from one to the other. So that will save you some money as well. Um, I also know a girl on YouTube and she is in Asia like I am and she actually took a bus from I think Singapore to another country. So those are some certain things that you can do if you want to um, travel to multiple countries at one time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. My last tip actually um, piggybacks off of the one that I just told you and this is uh, fly into the cheapest country. Now, if you're doing something where you're taking like a European tour or maybe you're taking a trip to different countries in Asia, try and travel into the cheapest one and then take a train or something around to the other countries. Just like the girl I said, um, she just recently took a bus to two different countries. I know also over here in Asia, if you are um, in Shenzhen, China, you can actually take a day trip um, to Hong Kong. So that's some of the things that you can do. So yeah, guys, those are my 10 tips for affordable travel in college. Some of these can actually help you even if you're not in college, just some things that you can do um, to save money and travel. It's always good to save money. So if you liked this video, please give it a good thumbs up comment down in the comment section below if you have any other tips or if you want to share where you have been or where you really want to go and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video i would so much appreciate it but until next time guys thanks for watching